Hi. It's nice to see that we've at least got a few people back, <laughs> some familiar faces from last time. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Where are we? One minute past. Have we still got people joining? Should we start, do you think? Yeah, I think we should make a start anyway, and, and people we'll can start. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, hello, everybody. Um, what we're going to do this week is to go straight into um, some soothing rhythm breathing. Uh, and then we'll do some talking after that, uh, if that's okay with everybody. <clears throat> so if you'd like to get yourself settled in your seats <clears throat> with your feet firmly on the ground, feel the ground that your feet are on. Remembering that there's a feeling almost of being suspended from the tops of our heads as if we're hanging from the top. So a, a relaxed but strong posture. Feel the seat that you're sitting in. If you can have your arms on your, your hands on your lap and your arms in a, a round shape, that helps open out the front of your body. And then if you're okay with closing your eyes, just allow your eyes to close. If you don't want to close your eyes, you can just soften your gaze, relax your gaze, don't focus on anything particularly, and then just allow your attention to settle on your breath. So that just means feel the sensation of the air moving in and out of your body. If you can breathe in and out through your nose, that's good. If you need to use your mouth, you can. Just feel the sensation of the air moving in and out of your body. And perhaps you can imagine that you, you've just seen somebody that you haven't seen for a while, that you really like, and they appear and you smile to see them. So you've got a slight smile on your face. Maybe you've come home and your, your dog's greeted you or I don't know. Just the suggestion of a smile on your face. And then as you breathe out, you can say to yourself, mind slowing down. Body slowing down. Feel the sensation of the air as it moves in and out of your body. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel your body in the seat. Mind slowing down. Body slowing down. And you might notice that your mind gets distracted easily might be a noise or it might be a thought just suddenly comes into your head. It might be about anything or you're having for tea. So when you notice that you're distracted, 
That's fine, that's our tricky brain. Just notice that distraction. And then if you wish, you can gently encourage your attention to settle back on your breathing again. And you can feel the sensation of the air moving in and out of your body. And if you wish, repeat yourself, mind slowing down. Body slowing down. And then take a nice deep breath in and breathe out and open your eyes. Thanks Lee, that was a really nice start to the session for me anyway. So what we thought was just to, to start off just whether anybody had any questions from last week. Um, we were gonna give a little recap, um, but was there, if there's anything that springs to mind for people, I wonder whether just typing that in, in the chat and we can kind of monitor that and hopefully respond. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully just give a little recap of last week. So we're on to session two and session one recap. So we spoke a bit about why we need compassion, the fact that life is, is really quite hard for all of us as human beings. And we spoke about the definition of compassion and particularly thinking of those two parts about that sensitivity to suffering and sort of being able to notice that but also taking kind of wise action and having a commitment to actually do something about it. And then we thought a bit about humans experiencing a range of evolved motivations of which compassion is one. Talked about humans being capable of great cruelty as well, um, but um, and a, a mind that doesn't know itself can be dangerous. Um, so part of compassion is getting an awareness of, of our mind to be able to direct it in the way that we want to. And then we looked at the fact that we just still find ourselves here. We don't choose to be born. We don't choose our families. Um, we're socially shaped. And a lot of the, the things have been out of our control and haven't been of, of our choosing. And then we thought about having tricky brains. Um, and we talked about the new brain and, and the old brain and how we can get caught in some tricky loops um, and that's not our fault this this brain of ours evolved thousands millions of years ago and um, we've not always got much control over it um, and then we we hinted at having two types of nervous system that we've got our rest and digest nervous system but also our kind of fight or flight nervous system and thought about how soothing rhythm breathing can help stimulate our rest and digest nervous system. And, and that can be the starting point to, to help us get our frontal lobes, our thinking brain online, and, and it can be the starting point for compassion. So I can't see whether or not there's any questions. So I'm just gonna stop sharing for one second. Was there any questions? No, it doesn't seem to be. Nope. OK, well, if anything comes up for people as we go along, then um, just let us know. We will monitor the chat. So I shall share back again then. Um, excuse me. It's a bit clumsy. Um, OK, so this is what we're going to talk about this week. 
So we're going to think a bit about the role of mindfulness in compassion. And Lee's going to speak about that and take us through an exercise. Um, and then spend some time thinking about the different types of emotion and the, the kind of motivational systems that, that sit behind that. Um, and then really thinking about the impact of COVID and these these difficult jobs that we all have at this this time and, and how COVID's perhaps impacting on that and how can we we understand that um, in the framework of these these different types of emotion, these motivational systems. And then just touching on the, the flows of compassion that we have and then building up to an exercise of practicing compassion to ourselves and, and building up a compassionate self to do that. Hopefully that sounds okay with everyone. We'll, we'll see how we get on. Yeah, there's somebody there. I'll ask if it's going to be possible to have copies of the PowerPoint slides. Yeah. I, I don't know whether that's going to be possible. Yeah, that is possible, certainly. don't know how that will work. Um, email, emails, or it is going on YouTube, I think, as well. Yeah. But it will be possible in some way. Yeah. So where are we? So are you going to share your screen again? Oh, Esther? yeah. You want me to? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So um, here we're looking at um, the cycle of mindfulness. Oh, there you go. The session will be available on YouTube and the slides can be made available via, via the Recovery College for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so what, what this is about is we're learning about um, how we direct our attention um, and that we can learn to direct our attention compassionately. Um, that we're... We're all vulnerable to our threat-based systems. We're going to talk a bit more about these three systems later. And we, we're vulnerable to that part um, of our threat-based system, our old brain, if you like, um, getting hold, grabbing hold of our attention and leading us down, uh, getting us cut, uh, caught in loops that, that aren't really helpful. And it can lead to all sorts of difficulties in dealing with, with, uh, with um, our emotions. Uh, and it can lead us to be very self-critical as well. Um, I think it's also about our most important relationship is our relationship with ourselves. And so it's beginning to look at that relationship to investigate how the mind works, how our brain works and how our relationship with ourselves works. And mindfulness also, this cycle of mindfulness is about knowing what we're experiencing at the moment of us experiencing it. So paying attention to what, what is actually happening and, and what we are experiencing. So that's, that's about being curious about this tricky brain that we've got, to be interested. So learning about this, this um, about directing attention, we, we learn that, that we can consciously direct it and we're going to do an exercise in a minute that, that shows us that. Uh, and, and it's like our attention is, it's like a spotlight. So when a spotlight in a darkened room, if a spotlight shines on something, the light, the spotlight isn't the thing that it shines on. They're two separate things. So it's like our mind focuses on something, but it's not the thing it focuses on. It's just bringing something to our attention. So we are not necessarily our thoughts and our feelings. They're important information about how we are in the world, um, but they are not us. So when we did that previous uh, um, exercise, we looked at the idea of notice, noticing and returning. So we sit and we're breathing and we notice how our tricky brain takes us away, distracts us all the time. That's what it's, that's what it's sort of for, that's what it does. And that's okay, that's fine. Uh, and I work with a lot of people uh, and I teach them this and they say, I can't do it. I really, really can't do this. I ask them what, why, what they can't do. And they say, well, I, I sit down and I try and do the breathing and I'm distracted. And I notice that my, my thoughts are going flying off here and there. 
And actually, that's doing it. Noticing that our mind is flying off is what mindfulness is. So it's just noticing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do what's called a body scan. Uh, and we start off with some soothing breathing and then we, we move into a body scan and I'll ask you to, to be focusing your attention. We'll give that a go. Yeah, try that. Okay, so um, I could probably, should we, take, should, we take the, uh, should we take the PowerPoint off and, and, and then we can have ourselves back on the screen? There you go. Hello, everybody. Same beginning. So we're in our seats, we feel the ground beneath our feet, we feel our body in our chair, feeling of being suspended from the top as if we're hanging from a strong but invisible thread, feel our bodies in the seat, our feet on the ground, if we're able to close our eyes then close our eyes otherwise just soften your gaze and begin Focus, bring your attention to your breath. So just feel the sensation of the air moving in and out of your body as you breathe in and you breathe out. And we can say to ourselves as we breathe out, mind slowing down. Just cueing and encouraging our mind and our body to slow down. Body slowing down. So remember that slight smile on your face. Remember if you get distracted that's fine, that's your tricky brain. Just notice it and then if you wish, gently encourage your attention to come back to your breathing. And then I'm going to invite you to put your attention in the toes of your feet. Don't have to do anything with your toes, just feel them. Resting there. Now about the soles of your feet. And the top of your feet. The heel of your feet. Your ankles, and your lower legs, shins, calves, the muscles, bone, what can you feel there? Up to your knees, feel your knees. What can you feel? Your knees, bone, sinew, tendon. And then your upper legs, your thighs, from your knees up to your hips, large muscles in your body. What can you feel there? Can you feel them resting? On the seat, do you feel any tension? Do you feel any muscles that are tense? If you do, you can always breathe into those muscles. And as you breathe out, you can breathe out any tension. Feel your legs on the seat, feel your tailbone, 
Feel your bum on the seat. Feel the pressure of the seat. Feel your lower spine, your tailbone, bottom of your back. Feel the middle of your back. As you breathe in and out, can you feel the pressure of the seat perhaps on your back? Your upper back. Up to your shoulders. Perhaps as you breathe in and out, you can feel your shoulders slightly moving up and down. Remember, if your mind drifts off, that's fine. Just notice it. And if you wish, you can gently bring it back to your breath. And then I'd invite you to put your attention in the tips of your fingers, very tips of your fingers and your thumbs. Imagine the blood flowing all the way from your heart to the tips of your fingers and thumbs. Feel the blood flowing all the way from your heart to the tips of your fingers and your thumbs. Feel your fingers and your thumbs. Feel the palms of your hands. Feel the backs of your hands. Feel both of your hands. Feel your wrists, feel the blood flowing on its way from your heart to the tips of your fingers and your thumbs, flowing through your wrists. Feel your lower arms from your wrists to your elbows. Feel the blood flowing, feel the bone, the muscle, the sinew. Up to your elbows. Feel your elbows, what can you feel there? Your upper arms from your elbows to your shoulders. And as you breathe in and out, perhaps you can feel your shoulders moving slightly up and down. As you breathe in and out, perhaps you can feel your belly moving in and out, almost like a balloon inflating, deflating. Feel your rib cage. Feel your chest moving up and down. Feel your lungs filling and emptying as you breathe in and out. Feel the air as it moves past your throat on its way to and from your lungs. Feel your throat, your neck. Feel your chin, jaw. Feel your lips resting gently together. Behind your lips, your teeth, your gums, the roof of your mouth, your tongue is resting in your mouth. As you breathe in and as you breathe out, feel the air moving past the tiny hairs on the inside of your nose. Perhaps you can feel the air is slightly cooler as you breathe it in, slightly warmer as you breathe it out. Feel your cheeks, your ears, your nose, feel your eyes behind your eyelids.
eyebrows, forehead. Feel the skin stretched over your forehead. Feel the skin as it goes up towards the top of your head, across your skull, right up to the top, to the very crown of your head. Imagine as you breathe in, you breathe in through the crown of your head all the way down to the soles of your feet. And back out again. and you are a body breathing. So breathe in, take a nice deep breath in and breathe out and open your eyes. Thanks, Lee. That's, it's amazing how much there is to notice, isn't there, that we just go around our day not thinking about any of this stuff. And then when we start paying attention to it, there's so much to notice. So sort of building on that um, with compassion being all about having a mindful awareness of our ourselves, our bodies, but also our emotions and our motivations. I'm just going to introduce um, a model of emotions that some people, um, motivational systems that some people might already be familiar with. Um, so to do that, I need to share my screen with you again. OK, so this is the, the compassion focused therapy three circles model, and I'm going to talk about each in a little bit more detail. But essentially, we've got our threat system which is all about seeking safety, our drive system, which is all about gaining resources, and our soothing system, which is, is about feeling safe. So I'm going to go through each in a bit more detail, but before I do that, I just wanted to read a quote. So this is originally, um, Vincent van Gogh said this, or van Gogh, however you say it, um, but it's written in the, the Compassionate Mind workbook, which I think Lee and I mentioned last time um, by Chris Irons and Elaine Beaumont, which um, is a really helpful tool. So it says, let's not forget that the little emotions are the great captains of our lives and we obey them without even realising it. So such powerful things that essentially have, have evolved and have particular purposes to, to guide our behavior. And we often don't give this, this much thought or reflection. So I'm gonna start with the, the threat system. So the threat system, as, as I said, is all about trying to keep yourself safe. So it's designed to help us avoid danger or to help us fight when we need to, um, but trying to all the time come to no harm. It's all about staying alive, which always makes me want to kind of do that um, so and it, it's specifically um, thinking about the, the key emotions associated with it are about anger anxiety and disgust which I'm going to talk a bit more about but essentially each of these systems really motivates we our emotions but also it guides our attention the things that we might pay attention to and it guides our behavior our kind of thought processes sometimes without us really realizing it. So just thinking about anger, this guy's look really angry there. Anger has a real evolutionary purpose for us. So if I went home today and my neighbor had, or I looked out the window and my neighbor had moved the fence a meter and taken a meter of my garden, if I didn't get angry about it, what's probably gonna to happen tomorrow? They may well take another meter of my garden. So anger helps us defend the things that are important to us. Um, it's really important in keeping us safe. Even the threat of anger can help other people not take advantage of it. So massively important. The next one, anxiety. So I guess 
anxiety is all about making us kind of avoid harm or perhaps run away from it. So it's it's actually really helpful to feel quite anxious about being on a really high cliff, getting too close to the edge. If we didn't have that anxiety there, we may well get far too close to the edge and, and fall off without actually meaning to. So it's a hugely powerful, important emotion. And similarly, disgust. If we didn't have disgust, it's it's disgust all about, it's, it's such a kind of powerful, driven emotion that's all about and, and making us avoid kind of harmful substances, keeping us well away. And, and I always think it's it's the reason essentially that we don't lick a dog poo, isn't it? Having that disgust there, thinking about that stops us doing it and, and keeps us safe, stops us coming to harm, stops us kind of being near people that might be infectious. Um, you know, so it's it's massively important. And then our threat system really comes into to play in situations like this. How might you feel if you had to walk down this alleyway? What kind of things would you be paying attention to? What might you do? You might actually kind of run away and, and go a different way. Or if you had to go through there, perhaps you kind of, I know I would potentially be getting my keys between my fingers thinking I need something to defend myself or um, maybe you might be quite submissive or, or maybe it would be about trying to make yourself seem big and strong, so less of a target. So all of these things are affecting our thinking, our behaviour, our, our motivation. And this one, I guess, is just thinking that a lot of the things that are threatening to us now are not so much, you know, we, we don't live in a world where we're potentially going to get eaten by a bear any minute, though we, we are in a world where we've got the threat of COVID currently. But a lot of the things that are really threatening to us are about social situations and our social acceptance and our sort of social status. And that that's really because we've we've evolved to live in social groups. So actually being able to fit in, if, if we didn't fit in in caveman times, we could well be rejected from the group and killed. So it's massively important and, and cooperation between people and having respect from people is, is totally integral to our survival. So that's the reason why when we, you know, we have these, we're in a meeting and afterwards our, our tricky brain starts running over and over. What did I say? How did I come across? You know, it's because this, this powerful threat system that's all about our survival is kicking in. And the thing about the threat system is it, it really dominates everything. So, and it dominates our attention. So we could go into 20 shops doing our Christmas shopping in those distant times when shops used to be open. And we'd have a brilliant experience in 19 of them. And one of them, we come across this woman. She looks you up and down makes you feel totally rubbish. What are you doing here? Have you even got the money to be here? So who is it that you think about on the way home? Who's running through your mind? Who do you talk to friends and family about? Do you think about those 19 times where everything went great? No, we don't. Our, our memory and our all of our focus is on these threat-based threat experiences. And that's because it's all about staying safe and staying alive. So our, our whole being is set up to focus most and to hang on to threat-based experiences. And that can make things really tricky for us in life when we've experienced a lot of trauma and difficult experiences. And the, the positive experiences, we kind of need to actively pay attention to because they just go through our minds like a sieve. And that's not our fault. It's, it's just the way our brains are designed. So next, the drive system. So as I said, that's all about trying to to get resources um, and it's it's very kind of reward based um, the drive system so we might feel quite excited or if you imagine you're you're playing a computer game and you get to the next level and you get that kind of yes feeling fantastic that, that winning feeling but it's also the drive system actually drives us to to go out and get that and that's because human beings we don't spend our entire life just avoiding danger. We need emotions that get us out of bed in the morning as well. It's not just about staying alive. So it's how you might feel if your, your favourite team scores. And I think for me, this picture just sums up that kind of, yes, fantastic feeling that we might get in our bodies, however short-lived it might be. 
or it might be how you feel when you get this sort of personal achievement you make it to the top of that mountain or um mountain might be a metaphor for some other thing that you're aiming for in your life it might be an academic achievement that kind of buzz that you might get from that so and and the thing about the drive system is when we don't achieve what we want to achieve that can really start triggering our threat system and we can get into this kind of almost threat-based striving for things this thought that we have to keep going and trying to get that um so they're very very kind of clearly linked and and can sort of trigger each other off particularly when we don't achieve the things that were the goals that we've set for ourselves in life our threat system then kicks in so then finally we've got our soothing system so the the drive system is it does contain a lot of positive emotions to sort of drive our behavior and the soothing system is also about positive emotions but research has shown that there is a clear kind of two sets of positive emotions that are quite different really so the um the drive emotions are very exciting they're very energizing whereas the soothing system is more about feeling safe feeling calm and connected to people so it directs our attention we may well be much more pro-social we may, may feel, feel kind of connected to other people interested in people and that sense of kind of safeness so it's really linked with our parasympathetic our rest and digest nervous system and of course it's linked to our early attachment experiences so we need to have had that experience of safety to then be able to internalize it and and be able to feel safe in our, our future situations our future life and relationships and it's also really linked to to the people around us um, and it's maybe how you you might feel if you're with kind of close friends that you feel safe with you can be open you feel like you can be yourself that's all linked to your soothing system and i guess it's it's really important not to conflate the the soothing system with our our compassionate self or, or with compassion because whilst it might be easier to think of um and have more pro-social attention and and think about other people's um, needs and our own needs when we're in our soothing system. So the compassionate mind and compassionate motivation might fall into any of those systems. So it may well be, you know, you require to, to act compassionately and care for a, a child. Um, you know, at some point your threat system might need to kick in to protect them. And that would be taking compassionate action at that time. So, so whilst we look at trying to build our soothing system a lot because that helps us think and, and makes us brings our our kind of frontal lobes our thinking brain online when we're feeling much calmer and, and in our soothing system it doesn't mean that we have to have this lovely soothing calm feeling all of the time in order to behave compassionately um it's that that can aid us but it's it's remember compassion's a motivation it does it's not just a feeling it's not about feeling lovely and warm and kind towards people it might be for sometimes but sometimes you know it's how do you how do you stay compassionate to somebody that you don't really like and um and but you can still have that compassionate care and attention so having a mindful awareness of how these systems operate the fact that the threat system can dominate can can stop them running the show you know we, we have these systems it's not our fault but it is our responsibility to try and notice that um, and we can practice moving from the threat system to our soothing system and one piece of advice that that really sticks with me is that the threat system is so important to our survival that that we should never go into battle with it you know if if we or, or people we're working with have lots of threat-based thoughts that people are out to get you or people are thinking bad of you. Sometimes reasoning with that can be helpful, but we also need to build up this, this soothing system to help us feel calmer in, in the first place because the threat system will always keep drawing our attention back. So hopefully that makes sense. I think Lee's going to talk a bit now about the link um, and, and how I guess getting us to reflect on how COVID has impacted each of these three systems. Do you want the slide, Lee, or do you want me to stop uh, yeah. showing for a while? Yeah, uh, yeah. Get put the slide up, perhaps. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, so um, we're, we're, we're looking at that in terms of, of COVID and what's been going on recently. Um, also, I think it's it's good to, to, to remind ourselves that we need all three of these, that we need them all in balance. Uh, that, as Esther said, that the threat-based system is our friend. It's there to keep us safe. Uh, and also the physicality of these. What, what we've been learning is how we can we can actually consciously move our attention around, um, learning to pay attention to how this may impact on us. And it impacts on us in, in, in very physical ways. Um, our brain, our system will release chemicals. Um, when we're under threat, we will release cortisol and adrenaline. Um, when, when we feel, uh, when we achieve something, we will release dopamine. When we're soothing, we will release cortisol, which it, it exacerbates it, help, it keeps us in that state. So it's a very, very physical thing. Uh, so the more we're aware of this, the more we can get some control perhaps over it uh, and learn to be skillful uh, in, into how we give energy to which of these, these systems. So thinking about, um, thinking about this in terms of what's been going on in the last, over the last year, um, has anybody, uh, perhaps, um, Perhaps if we take if we take the the slide off, then if anybody's got any questions or any comments they want to make, has anybody got any um, any comments or observations about themselves uh, in relation to those three circles and emotional regulation systems? Has anybody been aware of um, how this may have impacted on them and and how they uh, they may have um, some of these systems may have dominated in the last year? Give you time to think. I mean, for me personally, I was very much aware, obviously, how. Oh, hang on, we got some. Oh, that's a great point from from Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, yes. Yeah, so as we look at the, the the soothing system, part of that is is the affiliative system. We soothe ourselves by being part of something, by connecting to people. Uh, as as Esther talked about, it's to do with attachment relationships. So uh, the child feels anxiety, it will turn to its primary carer for reassurance, for a safe base, for a safe haven. Um, there's some more coming. Yeah, constant news headlines keeping the threat system activated. Yeah, threat system activated by media co coverage. Yeah. Remote working again, so there's that connection to um, working on your own. It's harder to, to get into that soothing system. Um, and as you say, that doom scroll, I think it's called doom scrolling, where we just, and I noticed myself doing that, uh, particularly earlier in the early part of, of the pandemic, just looking all the time at numbers and how many people have died and what was going on here, what was going on there, feeding that threat system. So being aware of that, so it's starting to meditate, yeah. Um, that's what Does it, somebody well, say, it, somebody saying about the. Um, the anger that people might feel towards people that aren't, aren't following rules or have a, you know, a conspiracy theory. It's kind of yeah. sometimes it, rather than bringing people together at times, it's really divided us, hasn't it? And, and made us kind of, we are very tribal generally as, as human beings. Yeah. And, and sometimes this infuriating anger that people have felt with their threat system. Yeah, very much so. There's, there's somebody mentioning a hot bath and a glass of wine. Yeah, absolutely. So the physicality of, of these things is really important to remember. So that that in that way, uh, meditation, um, yoga, tai chi, swimming, walking, all these things affect our system and tie into this co the connection between these three uh, emotional regulation systems. Yeah. The anger, and there was something on the news I, I was I saw in the, in the when I was doom scrolling last night about um, yeah somebody had gone into a hospital who they I think they've arrested because he was going in and trying to take people out of the hospital because he was a COVID denier and how angry some of the people working for the NHS were because they were witnessing the impact of COVID, people dying, the effect on them and the effect on all of us and those of us uh, most of us working for the NHS how we are dealing. Uh, you know, some of us dealing with the front line of this all the time. So 
noticing all the time how our threat system is activated and what we can do skillfully to develop our soothing system to help balance that. Anybody, anything? The impact of remote working as well and the extent yeah. that, that that impacts on our connection to others, definitely. Uh, and there's Sophie saying fear of social judgment for not doing enough to help. So that ties into the ideas we're developing here about uh, rejection and, and shame and, and the self-critic. Yeah, that can be your, your self-critic talking to you about that. Oh, come on, you've got to do something. Otherwise, people will think you, are, you don't want, want anything to do with you. You're no good. You're not helpful. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. That sort of stuff. That's back to the idea of developing a relationship with ourselves that is helpful. A compassionate relationship with ourselves that is helpful. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, threat system triggered drive to get fitter. Well, yeah. So, so that that's a positive thing. Isn't it? Um, if we get that balance going, then that threat system goes. Oh God, I've I've got to do something, and it motivates us. So, compassion. Remember, compassion is a motivation. Uh, we're at the time here, Esther. Should we move on to the next bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think we could go on forever once we start thinking about this impact, because it's just been huge, hasn't it? And to, to be working in the environments that we're working in throughout this time, I mean, it's a shared human trauma anyway, isn't it, across the world and across the country, mm -hmm. but um, particularly trying to kind of maintain a helping role with people as, as so many of us do in this time is a real challenge. So I guess... Mm -hmm about crying a lot yeah you know crying a lot at the suffering so there's that compassion and that compassion can motivate us to do something and that's why we're all here that's why we're all you know we joined together today because that compassion is motivating us to do something yeah. okay sorry yeah so it so i guess attending to and acknowledging our distress about this and the distress about others around us is is massively important as is working out what we what we need really and um hopefully lee's kind of also introduced the fact that this mindful awareness is is a key element of this so i just wanted to talk really briefly about um the three flows of compassion so i'm going to um oh i've done it again gone into the wrong slide sorry One of these days I'll get slightly less clumsy at this. So, so we just kind of summarise this, um, the contributions on a slide. I don't think anyone's mentioned the, the impact of PPE and mask wearing, but that's certainly something that, that came into our minds when we were going at and how that can interfere with our, our communication and our connection with people that helps us feel safe socially. Um, but people have mentioned the sort of usual soothing activities and, and, and then all of the, the threat system seems seems massive here but but sometimes it's given us more space or energy for learning being at home more so this the flow of compassion um i guess ju just to kind of mention that that we've got three flows essentially we've got the compassion that we might feel for others um and we've got compassion that we might direct to ourselves but there's also the ability to receive compassion from others and we might have different abilities in, in each of these different areas. For instance, a lot of the time, compassion for others maybe drives us to come into um, to working in healthcare, but perhaps we might find it a bit harder to receive compassion from others. Um, and, and that's something that we need to build up. Or we might find it harder to have compassion for ourselves. Perhaps we can be very kind of self-critical. So I, I wanted to just really focus for this last exercise on developing compassion for yourself and thinking about mentioned last week briefly the the three really core qualities of compassion so it's about wisdom all of the things that we kind of learn about our different systems our tricky brains and br bringing that but also having the the strength and courage to actually face suffering, to face our own suffering um, and do something about it. And then finally, that commitment and willingness and desire to actually help. So, so those three things, wisdom, strength and commitment. 
So I'm just going to end on an exercise that that just starts to, to hopefully get you thinking about those three qualities to, to develop this sense of a compassionate self. And then finally to direct that, that attention and that compassionate self to, to yourself personally. And then if it's okay with you, we'll, we'll just end on that then. Okay, so um, you probably know the drill by now that um, we're gonna start with just some, some soothing rhythm breathing. So getting yourself into a, a comfortable, upright posture, both feet flat on the floor, in contact with the floor, and imagining that there's a string holding your head up to the ceiling. So your back's upright, but in its natural S shape. And if it helps, just imagining greeting somebody that's really important to you, perhaps your pet, perhaps your loved ones, just having that, letting that half smile rest across your face. I'm just going to bring attention to your breath for a couple of minutes. So perhaps noticing it as the air goes in and out of your nostrils. Maybe it's your chest rising and falling. Maybe even noticing your breath in the back of your body, your rib cage expanding and contracting. And just start, if you can, just slow your breath down a little bit. Just trying to find a rhythm that's comfortable for you. It's not forced. Just getting a sense of slowing down. And if it helps, just saying the words on your out breath, mind slowing down. And again, on your out breath, body slowing down. And perhaps sinking down a little bit more into your chair. Perhaps relaxing back if you've been holding yourself very upright. Maybe a sense of feeling a little bit heavier. Hopefully a sense of, of just slowing down a little bit. And then if you can just try and hold in mind this value, this quality of wisdom. So what does it feel like to know that we all just find ourselves here, that we're all struggling to get through life with our tricky brains that have evolved millions of years ago? And perhaps that we're all going through a massive trauma with COVID Focus on how it feels like to, to kind of look out from your own eyes and, and know this, notice this in the world. Maybe thinking where you might feel that wisdom in your body or how it feels to notice suffering. And then bringing to mind this quality of strength and courage. I'm just thinking about where you feel that in your body. How do you hold yourself when you feel strong and courageous? And how does that feel? I'm thinking about how that 
might affect the things that you say. What kind of things would you say to yourself? Perhaps you've got this, it's going to be okay, I'm here. And how does it affect your voice tone? Perhaps even imagining walking down the street with this quality of strength, courage, confidence. And then trying to connect with this final quality of having this deep commitment to be able to notice and tolerate your distress and to be able to take wise action to do something about it. So how does it feel in your body to make that commitment, to have that motivation to care deeply? Maybe it's a sense of connection with your heart, maybe in your stomach, wherever it is for you. And just notice what it feels like to look out of the eyes, your own eyes, and, and really feel that sense of commitment. And how does it affect your voice tone, your facial expressions? And how does it affect the things that you might say? So if you can, try and bring all of those qualities together and just imagine what is it like to walk down the street as your compassionate self with this wisdom, with this strength and courage, and with this commitment to alleviate suffering, to notice distress? And then if you can, just imagine seeing in front of you your usual self, yourself that goes about your day And just imagine feeling this compassion or having this compassionate motivation towards yourself, noticing the stress and difficulties that you might be under, having the strength and courage to tolerate that. Maybe just saying to yourself in your mind, from your compassionate self to the self in front of you, May you be well. May you be happy. May you be able to tolerate the suffering that you have in life. And as we bring the session and the exercise to a close, just trying to take this forward into the rest of your day, this sense of wishing yourself well and having these newfound qualities or building on existing qualities of compassion, of wisdom, commitment and strength. So slowly opening your eyes, bringing your attention back. Thanks very much for joining us. I hope that we might see some people next week and thanks very much for your contributions. Bye everyone. Bye bye.